represented in that panel. So this, this was a joint panel with a specific mandate to look at the circumstances surrounding um, um, the arrest, um, um, to look at uh, the circumstances, the allegations that um, uh, um, the, the Gur Gimbub assaulted Ibrahim Masane, whether it was true or not, based on the available evidence. To, um, um, but, but it didn't stop there, but to also advise the IGP on issues relating to arrest, detention, and, and, and policing in general. Uh, because at the time we had a lot of uh, also uh, those who criticized us without even knowing what the mandate was. The TOR of the panel was specific. It was, yes, mainly to look at the Ibrahim Asani case, but also to look at issues that may have caused the Ibrahim Asani case. And the National Human Rights Commission chaired the whole process. And um, we, um, 17 witnesses were called. It was a 34-page report. The interesting thing is that um, Gorgimbu, the, the medical officer, the doctor who uh, treated Ibrahim Asane, we went to the locus um, on two, two occasions, even on announce um, uh, at the anti-crime. And uh, and a comprehensive report came with specific recommendation, medium term recommendation and general recommendation. But one of the specific recommendations, which of course everybody was interested in was the Ibrahim Asane. But the panel, so this was not just National Human Rights Commission. The panel comprising of representative of the police, CMC, Crime Management Unit, the Minister of Interior was present, Gambia Bar Association and Tango, there was a unanimous agreement that based on the evidence that it was actually Commissioner Gorgimbu who assaulted Ibrahim Asani. And we also unanimously agreed that actually they were subjected to forced labor. This is, so recommendation was made as far as the issue of Gorgimbu was concerned that disciplinary procedure should be made by the IGP. He's, he's a member of the force. We also recommended, recommended that the IGP should reconsider. The tension was high, removing him as a commander um, of the, uh, of, of, of the anti-crime. That was done. We also recommended that because of the pain and suffering, the harm done to Ibrahim Sane, although the doctor told us that it was temporary. It was, uh, you know, there was trauma on that, but it will heal. We recommended, we thus felt, uh, talking as a panel, that um, um, a, a reasonable compensation was 20,000. And I must say that um, as soon as the, it was, as I said, 34 page, uh, and also we recommended other things. Even um, we felt that the police uh, were, not e were not equipped well. The offices, the station diary was not kept properly. Police officers didn't have uh, pocket notebooks, among other things. So it was a very comprehensive report. In fact, that report that we had gave birth to the code of conduct that today that the police have, which we, we helped develop with them. So this was what happened. And True to the, uh, to the late uh, Mahmoud Job, he, he wrote a letter on the 28th. As soon as our report, our comprehensive report, 28th of September, he wrote, sorry, he wrote a letter stating that he has read the report and he is going to comply with the recommendations of those reports. And true to form, immediately the compensation was paid through our office to Ibrahima. Also, Gurgimbu was also uh, withdrawn. And uh, the other processes started. We have had, as I mentioned, we have had trainings. We, we've even had tra a, 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 a training of trainers for the police on how to implement the code of conduct. So, and we have had a very good um, relation because um, we felt that um, uh, a, a training the police is work in progress. And we have, had, we have been having those kind of trainings with them. So it was, again, I needed to give this background information. So it was therefore a surprise to us when we heard that uh, he was brought back. So we don't know the circumstances, why, because this is not just the National Human Rights Commission talking. This was the police talking. This was the, um, the Minister of Interior talking. This was the Gambia Bar Association, chaired by the National Human Rights Commission. This was Tango talking. So we have written to the IGP uh, asking for an explanation. We await uh, him to tell us, and as soon as he responds, we will tell you. But 
I hope this gives context because uh, a lot of people were asking me, wow, what have you guys done? But this is the context. This is the context of the issue of Gorgi Mbub. And uh, I thought I needed to um, just to dilate on it so that you can also understand um, the, the, the issues. I, I think I have um, looked at um, the, most of the issues and the trends um, um, relating to profanities and hate speech uh, by political um, supporters. Um, uh, we, we've looked at uh, religious leaders and just recently also we wrote, we didn't have a press, sometimes we have a press release. Other times, we write directly to the authorities. It's not only, always that we, we have this press release. So we have written to the authorities relating to the, 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 the Khurabala, relating to Imam Baka, Popona, and Musa Seidi. Again, these are worrying trends. When you have uh, incitement um, to kill people, incitement to violence. Uh, again, this is, Gambians must understand that, as I've mentioned, there has to be due process. We have, we have rights, but as I said, every right holder also has a duty and responsibility. And, uh, and, and we must understand that this is a country of due process. We cannot, we cannot encourage lawlessness. We cannot encourage impunity. And this is what everybody should stand for. So if you are a religious leader, if you are a minister, if you are a president, if you are the IGP, nobody is above the law and should be above the law. And this is why uh, the National Human Rights Commission was set up, and we will continue um, to, 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 to raise the red flag wherever we feel that we need to. We will continue to engage the authorities, and we continue to police uh, the human rights record of this country. So basically, thank you very much. Uh, I will hand over to Aisatu. Uh, basically, this was uh, what we wanted to talk about uh, with the press. Thank you. Nobody can hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah, talk. Thank you very much. My name is Alex Joseph from Twitter in Gambia. I just need a further explanation regarding the mandatory press that you took part in during the border administration. I mean, you must have mentioned observation to them, right? Could you discuss it as to what exactly did you observe during that point of time? And you mentioned the issue of visiting. What did you find out in the cities? And then uh, the issue of Golden Book uh, is related to anti crime. Do you think this is in any way undermining the work of the human rights? Thank you. Um, okay, um, I have mentioned, uh, you will all get a copy of it, it's, we finalized it yesterday, uh, of the um, registration process, which um, uh, we, we took part in. We, we went to 67 uh, centers uh, with, with a detailed fact sheet. We were looking at specific things um, uh, relating to uh, the, the voting, pro uh, the, sorry, the registration process. Um, uh, for example, were the registration centers even disability friendly? Uh, this was one of the things that we... Um, um, uh, issues relating to minors uh, voting. Um, um, the issues relating to whether the equipment was even working. Um, issue, issues rela relating to the, to the queues. Uh, were the registration centers even put in the, in, the, in the proper places? Because we discovered that some people had to walk four kilometers 
to come to a particular registration centers. Um, um, so th these were, we had a long checklist of, of, of things that we looked at. We, we wanted to also know, there was a lot of report as to party, party stalwarts interfering with the process. So we wanted to also observe, did it happen? We, we didn't want secondhand information. We wanted to go to the source. And uh, this, these are the many issues. Um, I think our report is again 17, 20 something pages, I think, 24 pages. 30 pages, sorry. So it's, it's 30 page report, which will be made available to everybody. Um, um, but um, no, no, we'll share with you. But if I have missed something, please, uh, please add. But uh, these were the issues that we were, we, were, we were looking at as a National Human Rights Commission. We, look at, we, look at, we were looking at the registration process with a human rights lens, because that is what we do. This, and we also talked to uh, the voters who were um, the potential voters, and also those who, um, those who also registered and had their voters card. How long did it take them to have it? Was it legible? What were the issues uh, involved? So it was, it was a long list. We, we went there with a checklist um, um, uh, with our investigators and our legal officers. So that is one. So as far as detention facilities is concerned, this is something that we do. It's our mandate. If you look at our Establishment Act, it's the mandate of the National Human Rights Commission to make sure that places of custody, prisons, detention facilities are human rights compliant. And we do that. We do spot check, but every year, what we also do is we do a comprehensive one in which all the commissioners also take part in the process. And uh, this was the one we did in December. We visited all the prisons. Uh, I'm saying all as we have many, but, but we have, uh, yes, we have three major prisons, but also uh, selected police stations right across the country. And that's what we do. So when we go again, we have a checklist. We have... Uh, the detention facility is there. Is it, uh, is it airy? How are they treating prisoners? Uh, the, the, the toilet facilities. Um, 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 even even, even the, the way the police themselves, or the prison's offices, uh, their offices, their living quarters. So it's a comprehensive um, um, checklist that we have. Um, uh, the food. Uh, do prisoners have enough recreation? Do they have vocational training? We talk to prisoners unfettered. We take them aside and, and actually find out the issues that are there. So we, we also did that. And based on that, we come up, so the, we also have, we have published it, you will have a copy, of a recommendation of these are our observations. We feel that this is not correct. We feel that these are not compliant. For example, the mixing of juveniles uh, with, uh, we only have one juvenile wing. We have, if you go to all the prisons, we do not have a juvenile wing for female prisoners. They make me uh, put with adult prisoners. So these are all observations that, and for each of our observations, we come up with recommendations. Because um, uh, as a society, and this is what we also impose on the, on the executive and the president, that uh, when we make recommendations, recommendations must be followed. Unfortunately, it's a Gambian thing. Usually recommendations are shelved <laughs> until something happens and then we start to fire fight. And this is the same issue when it comes to issues relating to land. We have, uh, we have, we have little fires that are burning, uh, issues relating to environmental pollution. Unfortunately, um, if you look at recommendations, the report at what could happen, they're there. But we have to move on from actually uh, the reports uh, and recommendations to implementation. But just in a nutshell, this is, these are the issues that we look at when we go and um, see these this detention facilities. I cannot, okay, your issue with Gurgimbu. As I said, um, 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 it's a concern to us, and that was why I spent time to give you um, um, uh, a context. But it should be a concern of everybody, because this was a joint panel of the Minister of Interior. It was a joint panel of the police themselves a joint panel of the Gambia Bar Association. We are talking about the Gambia Bar Association. It was a panel that had a representative of Tango, chaired by us. Let us listen to, to the IGP, because the letter I got on the 28th of September from the late IGP was that, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. This is a very good report. We will implement what you have, what, what your findings of your joint, joint panel. And uh, they have started implementing, and we have been very happy about the progress we have been going. 
and then this came and we have written so we'll we'll wait for the response of the igp if if, if it is true again <laughs> If it is true, this is what we, we this was the information that we got. But um, um, that's why sometimes human rights institution we also go to protect. We always try to go to the source and and get get the full information. So um, if it if it if, if it is if it has happened, it's a cause for great concern, and we'll move up to the next level to tackle that. But just right now, uh, it should not only be a cause of con cause for concern for us, but the whole panel. The representative of all those institutions. Thank you. Um, next question, please. Do we have any questions from the press? No? Yes. Can you please stand and No, I, you said no, I said yes. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, Thank you very much. But um, it's better if they ask it here because usually what will happen as soon as I finish, they'll swamp me asking me the same questions. You may just ask those questions now <laughs> if you have. And the culprits are laughing, they know themselves. <laughs> well, okay, so maybe to make it clear, the chairperson will not be available for individual interviews right after this press conference. It's a press conference for a reason. And um, we are very happy to host you for a press conference share public information and um, inform you about our work. But individual interviews are scheduled and um, planned according to our also schedule of activities. So I indulge your understanding to kindly ask your questions here. And if you would like an in individual interview, we can schedule that for another day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, over to you. Um, Thank you. Uh, without further question, I think uh, the chairperson has been very thorough and detailed uh, for that matter. I think issues have been clarified. Uh, nevertheless, as you have uh, indicated, our doors are open uh, for any uh, for clarification. Um, without wasting much time, I now have the honor and pleasure to invite uh, the Vice Chair to uh, give the closing remarks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I, on behalf of the National Human Rights Commission, the Chair, colleagues and staff, thank you all for coming to this press briefing. It's been um, highlighted that this is the second press briefing in the year, and I'm sure there will be many more to come where we interact with the press and let them know what we're doing and how far we have come. In his presentation, the chair has given a detailed analysis of what the Commission has been doing. I would use this opportunity to highlight one or two issues without reiterating what the Chair has said. As a press, we mentioned the study on social, sexual harassment and, uh, and workplace, and the policy on sexual harassment in the workplace. I will urge you all to take a look at that document. There is a 2020 State of Human Rights report and our activity report. In fact, that will give you a clear, clear picture of what the Commission has been doing. I share the State of Human Rights in the Gambia so that you help us to disseminate. I think the relationship we have built with you as a press is for you to ease and help us in doing our work. If you disseminate these documents, you come back with questions for us to answer. It helps us so that we reach uh, individuals who are miles away. And in, he, in the chairman's um, report, you heard him say we're trying to open regional offices. The reason for that is that we want to make sure National Human Rights Commission as an office, as an institution, 
and its work is felt by everybody, every citizen, um, everybody living within the Gambia, from Banjul to Koena. There's also the Police Code of Conduct. I urge you also all to help us disseminate that document. Like the chair said, it came as a result of the Gurgim Book case. He's giving an, a, 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 a perspective or a preview of how we came to sit on the Gurgim Book case. The headlines were glaring. And I think one of the somebody asked, is it going to affect our job? It's not going to stop us from doing our work, surely. And that is why we have written to the IGP so that they also know that our job mand mandates us. And we didn't sit, and I think one thing that has to be reiterated, and Chair said it, it was not even all National Human Rights Commission who made that decision. It was a joint commission, including the police, that came to the decision that God give book. One of the many um, recommendations was that he should be redeployed. So it, it, it's, going to, it's not going to stop us from doing our job by, in any way, shape, or form. But it, will, it has given us an avenue, maybe, to maneuver and expect maybe other issues like this to come up. The election process, also, I will want you to look at the report when it's circulated. I share the recommendations that the Commission has come up with. There are key identifiable recommendations there. I will want you as press also, the media, to help us circulate. Make a report on them. If necessary, come and ask us questions. Because we are all in it together. I always say the National Human Rights Commission cannot work in a vacuum. We need the press. And this interaction we are having with you is only to, to make sure that necessary information reach the right people. When Chair was talking about the negativity around this election period, it's not a joke. It's there in the press, and most of you report about it. And it's the fight would be in terms of how do we cover it down? How do we make sure? And that's why we started meeting political parties. And I think later you, a report on that also will be disseminated to you people. The TRRC chair, I think, has really summarized it all. But I will go further and say, like he said, let's wait for the report. But when that report is out and the recommendations are glaring to all, I think that is when pressure should be mounted for government to do the needful. Because there is nothing worse than having all those victims make their terrible confessions and uh, sorry, make, uh, go through all what they've gone through in the TRRC by, we all had these horror stories that most of us did not even imagine was happening within the Gambia. And you have uh, human beings who are still working with the scars. I know one or two people who never told, in fact, the whole story of what they endured because of shame, because of... Um, it was, it was like it was going to open a wound within them. And so when the report comes out, it will be our duty, all of us, National Human Rights Commission, the civil society, the media, to put pressure and make sure the recommendations are fully implemented. I think these were the key issues I wanted. But let me go back again and say a 2020 report and activity report will be given to each of you. You look at the human rights situation that we had um, specified or looked into in that report so that you help us build on it. And I want to use the opportunity again to thank you all, as always, for coming to this press conference. And we'll call you back again, I'm sure, very soon. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you all for coming to attend this press conference. And we are closing. And you give them the reports? We have already done that. Ah, okay. We have sent out the reports. Except the election.
Thank you.